Good evening, everyone, uh, and welcome to the, the 2021 Spider Athletics Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Uh, my name is Chris Schaefer. I'm the Associate AD uh, for Development with the Spider Athletic Fund, and, and I'm thrilled to be here tonight to celebrate these five individuals uh, and their accomplishments and, and contributions uh, to Spider Athletics here. And, uh, before we get rolling, there are uh, a couple people I want to recognize tonight. First is uh, President Halleck and his wife, Tina. Uh, who have been here uh, just a few months now, but have uh, become regular spectators at, at all of our sporting events. And I think President Halleck has even been known to take a, uh, a few ground balls with the baseball team out at practice there. Uh, and, uh, and our vice president and director of athletics who was unable to uh, join us tonight, uh, he's feeling a little bit under the weather, but um, I know he uh, uh, wishes all of our inductees uh, congratulations uh, and, and a well done on, on all their accomplishments here with Spider Athletics. Um, and now without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to the voice of the Spiders, Bob Black, and, and he'll walk us through the night. Thank you, Chris. Um, and also to uh, Tina and Kevin Halleck, welcome to your first Athletics Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Chris, you as well. Your, your maiden voyage, and, and in some ways this is really the first one for all of us because this is the first one back since the pandemic. We did not have an induction ceremony last year. So many things obviously were missing, so it's been a long uh, 20 months because I tell everybody this is one of my favorite events uh, during, during the year. Um, it, it actually probably gives me more heartburn when we go through the process, and it's more heartwarming when we go through the ceremony. Um, because we have such tremendous candidates year in and year out. And I, I'm not going to introduce them individually um, or make them stand, but I do want to give a shout out to our committee members uh, who came together this year. And I will tell you, there is normally some very robust conversations um, about who to induct into the Hall of Fame. I think this year everybody was just so happy to see each other that we had very little um, animated discussion this year. I think what it speaks to is the quality of the class that we are inducting uh, this year. Uh, committee members, thank you for a job really well done, and uh, next year we will look forward to some high volume discussion because there will be some great candidates moving forward as well. Uh, let me look back for a moment. One of the traditions we always have at our Hall of Fame event before we induct and welcome the new class is to honor those who are already in our University of Richmond Athletics Hall of Fame. There are many of them here tonight. I would ask you to stand, please, so that we can celebrate your accomplishments to University of Richmond Athletics. Current Hall of Famers, please stand. So we kind of took some baby steps in coming back uh, this year. Uh, many years we induct a team of distinction. We did not do that this year. We hope that will be back next year. Obviously the room is, is half full tonight because that's the limit that we have with our COVID-19 uh, guidelines and we obviously hope to fill the room again next year. I will say if you didn't get the information that we are live video streaming tonight we're not on Zoom, don't worry about that. It is on the Richmond Spiders YouTube page. If you need to pull out a phone now and text that information to family and friends who couldn't make it tonight and want to watch it, we are live video streaming. Just tell them to Google Richmond Spiders YouTube page and they'll be able to see you on the ceremony as we, as we live video. Uh, a few housekeeping items and then we will uh, move on. Um, Inductees, when you're introduced, if you'd please come to my right to accept your plaque and then you can, from President Halleck, uh, and then walk behind the stage and up the steps and to the podium for your induction speech. Uh, you should have gotten sweet tickets, game tickets, and parking passes in your folder when you came in. If you're missing any of that, Tara Stewart is in the back of the room. Uh, she will be glad to help you with that. And inductees, we do ask you to meet with about five minutes to go uh, before halftime tomorrow at Robin Stadium at the football game in the south end zone on our sideline, on the Richmond sideline by the uh, red zone tents for your introduction um, at halftime. And family members who are here tonight, if you haven't done it already, when we're done this evening uh, for pictures, the room is yours. Take as many as you'd like with whomever you'd like. The backdrop will be here. Uh, feel free to take as many pictures as you'd like. Uh, the inductees and families know that obviously we had an official photographer who is here and we'll be distributing those pictures as well. 
Uh, and then I mentioned her briefly, but one more thanks. Um, this event takes an awful lot to put on, um, and it's been a while since we've done it. So there were some rough edges that we got through. Just a shout out to Tara Stewart from our athletic office in the back of the room. Tara, thank you so much for all that you did for us. All right, on with the show, as they say. So John Beeline arrived here in 1980, uh, 1997. Um, he inherited four seniors who had never had a winning season. And there are a couple of moments early in Coach Beeline's tenure that I would like to relate, kind of go off the script and the, the stats that you're going to see up on the screen in a couple of moments. So we held the press conference in the spring of 97. And when the press conference ended, John had done all his interviews. Some of those players were in attendance. Everybody had pretty much cleared out. And I walked out the doors of the Robbins Center, and two of our players, two of our senior players, were sitting on the steps by themselves. And I walked over to them. And it was Darrell Oliver and Carlos Cueto, uh, two of our outstanding guards. And I said, fellas, what do you think? And they had that look in their eyes of worry, of concern, and they said to me, well, we're a little bit worried. We don't know Coach yet. He's, he could bring in players that are going to play ahead of us. It's our senior year. He's going to change the style. And you could see the look in their eyes. I can still picture it to this day. And I did my best because I didn't know Coach Beeline at that moment either. I said, Chuck Boone will not steer you wrong. He convinced Coach Beeline and his family to come to Richmond. And if you give him a chance, you're going to be successful. And it didn't take very long for that to happen because the winning began in game one and kept on going. We beat Virginia in that very first game. The coach was on the sideline at the Robbins Center. Great game in double overtime. Some precocious, carefree freshman named Rick Houston went off in that game. He is here tonight for the Spiders and we won that game in double overtime. But what I really remember is John came out to do his post-game radio interview with us, and the first thing he said to us was, here's what I just told the guys in the locker room. Make this a highlight, not the highlight of the season. And boy, did that ever happen. We wound up winning 23 games, the CAA championship. That worried senior guard, Darrell Oliver, was named the tournament MVP of the CAA tournament that season. And of course, we beat South Carolina in the NCAA tournament. Uh, in five seasons, John's teams won 100 games, three postseason appearances, one against West Virginia and at Minnesota in the NIT. He closed his career with a, an amazing game in the Robbins Center uh, against Syracuse. And then, of course, went on to coach at West Virginia and then to Michigan, where he became the Wolverines, all-time winningest coach. Took him to two Final Fours and two national championship games. Um, he did finish with a winning percentage at Richmond of 654, which was second only uh, to Hall of Fame coach Dick Tarrant, 655. Coach Tarrant is here tonight as well. John, I got to say this. Do you remember the game at William & Mary where that silly referee gave you a technical in the hallway of the locker room at halftime? <laughs> If we had won that game, you'd have had a 656 winning percentage. <laughs> all right, look, it's not all about the numbers, obviously. It's about the person he is, the coach that he is, and how he has cared and guided his players uh, for a lifetime, whether they're Richmond players, West Virginia, Canisius, Michigan players. Um, we are so thrilled to have him back. Many of you know he is now a, a coaching advisor with the Detroit Pistons. He is actually missing a Pistons game tonight to be here with us. So I think you know how special this moment is to him as he is to us. Hall of Fame coach, John Beeline. If you're going to be runner-up to anybody, Dick Terrence a good one to be runner-up to. So um, this is great for, for the, the family and I to come back here. I feel so honored also to, with all the other inductees, you know, Stacy and Dr. Young, uh, Heather, 
uh, and, and obviously Helen Driscoll's family, and, and she was, she's amazing in a time where it was so taboo for women to even be the athletic, and they didn't have opportunities like that. So uh, incredible accomplishment. So I'm, I'm just honored to be part of this. It's special to us. I think the last time I was in this room, we were the la today we would make the NCAA tournament, but we were the last team on the board. They were taking 64 then, and I, they told me later, you were the last team out. And to sit in this room, and we, we had a pretty good NIT run, but everybody's in this room just, down, just brokenhearted about that. But we had some fun anyhow. Um, and, I, and then the last time I think I spoke to a group, I couldn't finish the talk. I, I was bawling like a baby because I was leaving Richmond uh, to, go to, to go to West Virginia. I'm not proud of that, but it also shows the love that, that we had, the family had for this place. Uh, and um, that's why I guess it's such a great honor uh, to be a part of this. So a lot of people to thank, but most importantly, I don't want to forget, is my family is here right now. So Kathleen is here. Kathleen, would you please stand, please, Kathleen? Uh, right, the love of my life. Patrick, Patrick is not here, but I, a spider graduate herself, Shauna Griffin Hendricks is here. All right, a former, played for Jim Reed, Mark Beeline is here. And then Andy uh, is here, and he's a Michigan graduate and was, in, was like in first grade when we moved here back in 1997, seven years old. So they're all here, and we couldn't, that's Coach's family, Chris is here tonight, he knows this. You don't do any of this stuff without support of the family. Uh, how about this? We moved nine times in, in, since Kathleen and I got married. Nine times. That's, that's difficult. The four children, those four, right, graduated from four different high schools in four different states as they were following their nomad, nomadic father around to coach, like almost like a military type of family so that we could, we could explore this journey. Um, I got to put my glasses on too. All right, this won't this won't work. The uh, the we left Buffalo to come to Richmond, and left Shauna back in Buffalo. The, you know, as I said, the future Richmond Spider, uh, because this was the right thing to do. We felt at a time, and um, it it was just everybody sacrificed so much. There's no Hall of Fame for coaches' wives, right? But. Kathleen would be a first round ballot inductee in it. If you imagine most of those nine moves, it's like, I got to go recruiting, I got to do this, the movers are coming, I hope it all goes well. <laughs> that's, that's not great for your marriage, but somehow it still worked out. The, uh, the, and then the, ki the, the, the kids, you know, to be, to, to, to all those times pick up and move say goodbye to the great friends we had here at Benedictine, St. Uh, Edwards, and then moved to somewhere else. And they did that four or five times, or actually seven or eight times, they did it through the process of growing family. So they're the, they're the big reason that, w that we were able to accomplish any success, had that support all the time, and obviously, thank you, could not have done it without the family. Richmond, uh, I mean, just special. Just absolutely special. Uh, I followed and loved Richmond uh, because of Dick Terrence's team. When I saw them beat Syracuse and beat Indiana, and I was a Division II coach, I said, what a, what a special place to watch And when I was watching Richmond play. And so when Chuck Boone called me in 1997, um, I, uh, I had an obvious interest. Um, but it, as you're going to find out, it's tougher to pull the trigger on that um, it's tougher than you think, and I'm going to get back to that later on. So, the the uh, I have I have so much gratitude for Chuck, but I'm going to get back to Chuck in a minute. But when you think about Claiborne Robbins, Dick Terrett, Jim, I had two great ads, two great presidents, Jim Miller, Bob Black, Susan Shepard brought sunshine to our office all the time. Right, guys. All the time, we just love Susan Shepard, and she. Uh, and then when you're when you're trying to grow a program, you're changing leagues to the A10. There's a lot that goes through that, 
And Susan was the one stable force when I'd be a crazy guy some days. I had great help also from George Ivey, from Alan Fred, Ken Hart, Harold Babb. I mean, these guys were amazing support behind Chuck. Um, the, uh, my assistant coaches, Jeff Neubauer, Matt Brown, Mike Jones, Phil Seymour, amazing people. Uh, the, the student body, the staff, the, and their staff was amazing. The student body that was behind us, our alums, uh, the Spider Athletic Club. Uh, I'll tell you a quick story about the Spider Athletic Club and our student body. At one of those times, I think it was my third or fourth year, Rutgers had called and wanted me to interview for the job, and this was pre-9-11. Can you imagine this? We went, we interviewed, we were in talks, didn't know what was going to happen. And imagine, I come, I, we land at the gate, I get off the plane, and the Richmond band is at our gate. Now, they don't have boarding passes, you just sort of walk through back then, <laughs> and there's all these people playing the, 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 the Richmond uh, fight songs to me, and it's sort of, Jim Miller had that done and changed the deal. Uh, I said, we're staying, we're, we're just coaching right at Richmond. So uh, we had some great crowds, as he said, great wins, an atmosphere that was incredible. We said the first game and against Virginia, Ricky goes crazy as a freshman. Uh, never let me forget about it after that. Uh, Gerard, I mean, they, we were so good. The CA Tournament Championship game right here in, in Richmond where Jonathan hit a gr huge jumper. Jonathan Baker is here tonight. Hit a huge jumper in the left corner. Uh, but Daryl Oliver, Eric Poole, Carlos Cueto, amazing. Um, the great last second win against South Carolina, and I still remember even when we lost to Washington, all so many of you and so many of our Spider Athletic Club just saying thank you, Richmond, or thank you, Spiders, and we were so, so fortunate. Uh, we had a lopsided win over West Virginia here in front of a packed house. It was an incredible win. It was Scott Unger and Rick and these guys, Kinte Smith, who's here, an amazing win for us, and I, I can't stop thinking about that. So, Great moments and great support, but the student athletes we had at that time were second to none. They were, they were just uh, so many of them here. Kinte Smith is here, Scott Unger is here, Ricky and Jonathan Baker. All, all four of those and many, many more would have, when I look back at it now, they all would have started for me at, Michi at West Virginia and Michigan. They were really good players. We are so <laughs> fortunate to have them. Who, is anybody doubting that? Yeah, yeah. But they, they, were, they were amazing. But we had, we had so many people like that. And that's really, without guys like that, coaches like me, coaches like Chris, we get real dumb when you don't have, we get to be bad coaches when you don't have good players. And we had ter not just good players, we had terrific players. Uh, during that time, we went, and we should have went four if it wasn't for the CAA. We would have went, we, went, we would have won, we played in the conference championship game four of the five years. We would have played in that fourth if they wouldn't let us, if they would have let us, right, Ricky? We would have won that whole thing. But it, they're just great people. Um, so it's so blessed to have so many uh, uh, people that have been, been around us during that time. I don't think, there's so many I might forget, but amazing, but I really want to go back and finish with the story of how it all happened. Because now it goes back to Chuck Boone. And when I say that, it's like I get, I get emotional. And, I, and I, like I say, when you get older, when you get older like me and some of you, you cry like a baby sometimes. But it, it is amazing how it all happened. And I'm going to go over my five minutes, but I got to tell you this story because he's an he's a f amazing friend, friend for life, amazing man. And the unusual story of we, us getting here, a lot of people don't know, that he calls me in March at the end of our season, at the end of his season, and um, we have just lost a game in the championship game, and it's like two days later. I couldn't be lower. He calls and asks me if I'm gonna be interested in, in Michigan, or in Michigan, sorry, a lot of schools, in Richmond. And, and um, I immediately, immediately say yes. He says, so I'm, got, I'm on the next plane to Buffalo. So, of course, we invite him up. 
He comes up uh, that next day and we talk. He has no idea at the time. We don't tell him. Uh, we've, had a, we've had a tragedy in our home just three weeks prior to that where Kathleen's mother died right in our house of a sudden heart attack, a blood clot. He has no idea, but he invites us down to campus. And we said, yeah, yeah, we're, we're going to go and look. But then it starts to hit us. Wait a minute, we're leaving. We just lost my, our mother-in-law, Kathleen's mother. Um, we, we, we don't know if we can do this. We came all the way down here. It, we, the azaleas are in bloom. It's like we're leaving all that snow in Buffalo. We see this. Un, we, we got a campus with a lake in it in the Robbins Center. And we're saying, we got to do this, but we know it's probably bad timing. So on the visit, we, can't, we have to cancel the final. We interview. I think we're going to get the job. He invites us to dinner. I have to cancel the dinner. I have to cancel the dinner and say, Chuck, we can't do it. Kathleen is in tears, and she can't, <laughs> she can't stop crying right now, and understandably. So we canceled the dinner. He says, I said, I'm going to go home. I'll give you a call. So I went home, and I called, and I said, Chuck, I can't take the job. Now, today's AD would say at that point, uh, all right, well, you're missing a great opportunity here. But so many ADs and leaders right now don't have the empathy that Chuck Boone has. That's what great leaders have. And he says, you know what? I understand and respect this. But I'm not moving on this next coach until you tell me to my face in Indianapolis like six days later. And I said, come on. I just got it over with. I can't do this. So we get in the car, and for some reason we decide to drive to Indiana to the Final Four. And it's, 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 six day, it's five days later. And we drive, and for six hours, we just talk, and we talk, and we talk. And finally, I said, damn it, we're getting this over with. I'm calling him at 6 o'clock. I'm going to tell him no, and we're going to stop it because I can't tell him to his face. So I'm going to chicken out and tell him over the phone. <laughs> now, nobody has cell phones now. Nobody has cell phones. Nobody. Chuck certainly didn't, right? <laughs> Alan Fred wouldn't let him get one. He wouldn't let me get one. So, see, there was a time when nobody had said cell phones. You guys know that, right? So at any rate, I say, okay, 6 o'clock, we're going to call him. Kathleen's in the, car, in the car. Sean is in the car. Phil Seymour is in the car. We've been talking about for six hours. Let's get this over with. So I said, whatever exit we're at at 6 o'clock, I'm going to get on a pay phone and tell him no. So at 6 o'clock, here's the next exit. Get off, right? The exit is Richmond, Indiana. The exit's Richmond, Indiana. So I go to the, st I don't tell them, I go to the steak and shake at the payphone, standing out in the cold, right? And call them and say, Chuck, gulp, right? I want to be your next coach. <laughs> he goes, by golly. He goes, that's something we don't hear in Buffalo. By golly, I knew you were going to do it. I knew you were going to do it. Now I go back into the car. They think I said no. <laughs> and I get back in the car. They said, how did it go? I said, we're going to Richmond. <laughs> and that, true, that story is so true. Chuck Boone, Alice, thank you for letting them spend that time. They changed they absolutely changed our lives. We have such great memories. I follow Chris Mooney's teams every game. I, the heartbreak of the wins, the great victories that that team has over the years. Jerry Wainwright's teams, everybody follow them. It's in blood. You know, Sean is a graduate. Mark went here. We love Richmond. Chuck and Alice gave us this opportunity. We will be spiders for life. Thank you very much. Thank you, John, and welcome back again to you and, and, and your family. Um, as he said, once a spider, always a spider. I can, I can tell you that I could always count on at least two texts a season from John Beeline, and they both said the same thing, beat VCU. <laughs> so I'm, I'll be waiting for those, those two texts. Yeah. <laughs> um, our next inductee was a student athlete literally for all seasons, Helen Dodd Driscoll. 
uh, excelled in the fall, in the winter, in the spring. If we'd had summer sports, I'm sure she would have excelled in those as well. She earned 15 athletic letters out of a possible 16. Four each in basketball, track and field and tennis, three in field hockey. I hear there's a move afoot to try and get her that fourth one in field hockey and make it a sweet 16. We'll see about that. Uh, she became just the second freshman in school history to be a Blazer Award winner for three sports, and she won the West Hampton Seal Award her junior year for outstanding achievement and character. She was also a member of the University of Richmond Athletic Board for three years. Not sure how she found time to do that. Following graduation, she went on to a long and successful career right here in Richmond with our Richmond Public Schools system. Helen Dodd Driscoll is inducted posthumously. We are thrilled to have her family with us this evening, accepting the Hall of Fame honor on his mother's behalf. Please welcome Helen Dodd Driscoll's son, Stuart Driscoll. glasses as well. What a thrill it is to be here tonight for an aunt to honor my mother. If she were here today, she would be 101 years old. Her story is incredible by today's standards, but unheard of in the 1930s. Mom played four sports in college during the academic year and was a star player in each of them. In the fall, she played field hockey. There's an interesting story with that. She'd never seen a field hockey field. She didn't know how to grip the hockey stick. But clearly, she was encouraged to play by Miss Crenshaw, the director of physical education at the time. By the end of the season, she only lacked maybe two quarters of playing time to qualify for her varsity letter and was arguably the best player on the team. Only a couple of years later, she was selected to the United States All East Coast team, um, known as the Federal Reserves that you see up there on the screen, that competed against a field hockey team from Europe. During the winter, she was an outstanding guard on the basketball team and later served as captain. In the spring, she played tennis and earned the number one seed. After tennis practice, she worked out with track and field, where she was a sprinter as well as a shot putter. Quite the combination. And by the way, in the shot put, she was just a little shy from breaking the all-time women's record here. Mum became only the second freshman in school history to earn three varsity letters. The summer after her freshman year, she continued to play playing tennis and entered the City of Richmond Tennis Championship Tournament. She won the tournament, of course, but it was the way she won it. She defeated the runner-up in straight sets, 6-1, 6-0. When she wasn't playing tennis, she was playing third base for a softball team that she helped lead to the Virginia State Championship. She was also recruited and signed by an all-women's baseball team to play third base and was the star of that club. In between these sports, she somehow found time to earn a top national ranking in archery and was considered the experts, an expert swimmer. Every sport which she was given the opportunity to play, she was a star player. Her young age or lack of experience didn't seem to matter. By the beginning of her senior year, she was known as the athletic queen of the Richmond area. And how in the world are you able to keep up with your studies with such an athletic load? And yet she was a good student and was offered a position at Bucknell University as an instructor in health and physical education. At the end of the day, here at the University of Richmond, she earned 15 letters, as was just mentioned, out of a possible 16. You just need to ask the question, who else in the history of women's intercollegiate athletics, or for that matter, men's intercollegiate athletics, has, has earned 15 letters? 
It's just a phenomenal record. For you coaches here, if you've ever helped scout on the pro level or when you're recruiting for your college, you know how critical it is to fully evaluate the character of the athlete before you make the offer. Well, let me tell you about mom's character. Mom's parents were brought up, mom's, mom was brought up by her parents in, in the church and trained her up in the way she should go. And when she was older, she didn't depart from it. Mom understood that her talents were a gift from God. She was never interested in talking about her achievements. And if there was one hallmark of mom concerning her accomplishments, it was humility. In her junior year, she won the coveted West Hampton Seal Award for outstanding character as well as achievement. I remember years ago coaching against Bobby Richardson when I was a hitting coach and infield coach at the University of Tennessee. Now, for those of you who are not baseball fans, Bobby Richardson can't see in these things out here. Bobby Richardson was an outstanding second baseman in the 50s and 60s with the New York Yankees. He still owns several World Series records. But the point is, when he would sign an autograph, he would include Philippians 3.14. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And it occurred to me that this is exactly what Mom was all about. Mom had a steely determination. She was a competitor. The word quit was not part of her vocabulary. She had no respect for it. She always pro projected a positive attitude. And clearly, no matter the sport or task, she always gave 100% striving for excellence, a perfectionist. Mom, of course, was a champion student athlete here at the University of Richmond, setting quite the gold standard for others who followed. But more important, she was a champion in life. Whether it was enduring adversity or enjoying success, she always led with love, grace, and dignity. After getting married, being a wife and a mother and raising up three boys, she then accepted a position with the City of Richmond Public Schools as an elementary school educator, where she went on to make a real difference in countless lives for the next 25 years. Helen Dodd Driscoll fought the good fight. She finished the race. She kept the faith. I'd like to thank my mother's advocates, along with my brother Jack, for their efforts in bringing up before the current committee the oversight of Mom's induction when this Hall of Fame was first established. And I'd like to thank all those involved in honoring my mother and for the opportunity to make these remarks on her behalf. Thank you all. Thank you, Stuart, and congratulations to you and your family who are with us here this evening. Uh, our third inductee uh, saved his best for last. That would be uh, former Spider football player Stacy Tutt. Uh, and it was a best that I will tell you almost didn't happen in his senior year. This was 2005. Our head coach was Dave Clawson, who has gone on to be a pretty good head coach with the Wake Forest Demon Deacons right now. And the one thing Dave was was a really good offensive mind. And, and he saw Stacy as a tremendous athlete. And he said, we gotta get the ball in his hands wherever we can. So he decided to move Stacy to wide receiver for his senior year, which made sense. We can have passes caught by Stacy. He could run some end around. He could throw a flea flicker. It all made sense until the first two games when we lost them both and we finished with a grand total of six points. Dave's a pretty shrewd football coach. He moves Stacy Tut right back to quarterback. In the next 11 games, we averaged 31 points a game, scored 40 or more three times, went on to finish nine and four with a number eight ranking in the country and a conference championship as well. Stacy, you made Coach Clawson look good again. <laughs> uh, Stacy was pretty good. He finished in the top 10 in virtually every quarterback category that we have, both for that season and in his career. He was named All-Atlantic 10 that senior season 
and was also named the Richmond Touchdown Club Offensive Back of the Year and a finalist for the very prestigious Dudley Award here in the Commonwealth, given to the top Division I football player in Virginia. And now he receives our top honor, Richmond Athletics Hall of Famer, Stacy Tutt. Pleasure to be here. I uh, see a lot of familiar faces I haven't seen in a while. Um, so it's very good to see everyone. Uh, first of all, I'd like to acknowledge the committee. Thank you so very much. Um, it's truly an honor to be uh, amongst some of the greatest athletes, but also greatest people uh, to ever uh, grace this campus. Um, congratulations to the other inductees. I thought I was a, a well-rounded athlete until I mean, I don't know how you top that. Like, that's, that's, that's amazing. That's truly amazing. So, uh, again, so thankful to be here. Um, this is kind of weird because, you know, football is like the ultimate team sport. So to be acknowledged individually is, you know, kind of silly. Uh, you know, football, you know, it takes one person to do one thing wrong, and the whole play is dead. So... Um, you know, I want to acknowledge, you know, some of my teammates. Uh, you know, I have David Freeman here, Cliff Coker, Andrew Bogle, uh, quite a few I know would have liked to come. Uh, but, you know, anybody ever I ever laced, up, laced it up with or, you know, practiced with or anything, doesn't matter how long we were, to, were together. Um, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, you know, this, this isn't an award for me, it's an award for, you know, for all of us. So thank you guys very much for that. So. All right. Uh, I'm going against my own judgment. Uh, I do have some, some people that I would like to acknowledge. Uh, first, I would like to acknowledge my wife, Danielle. I had no idea who she was when I was here. <laughs> she actually worked with the Jets, uh, so that's how we met. And uh, you know, she's you know truly been a blessing. Uh, we have a, you know two beautiful kids, and you know thank you for you know for everything you've done and being supportive. Uh, all right, let's go with some coaches. High school coach Todd Jones. Fort Union Military Academy, John Schumann, Tripp Billingsley, here at Richmond, Jim Reed, everybody loves Coach Reed, uh, Coach Hanson. I mean, if it wasn't for those guys, you know, I, I could still be in Tappanic. Um, you know, the fact that they would, you know, come down there, small town, uh, you know, where a lot of people, you know, really didn't have opportunities to, to go beyond high school and play for, you know, for them to see something in me is uh, truly awesome. Dave Clausen, arguably the smartest coach I've ever been around in any sport. Um, and we had our, we had our moments. <laughs> we had our moments, but you know, I, I like to think that I was, you know, still immature and still learning a lot. Um, but I'm grateful for, you know, him coming here, uh, you know, kind of expanding our, our knowledge of the game and helping me grow as an individual. Uh, Mark Carney, who was my quarterback coach at the time, uh, you know, he was, he was just like glue. You know, he just, you know, kind of made everything come together. Uh, he was a quarterback coach who played under Coach Clausen at Fordham. And, you know, he, he's just, he had just graduated. 
this was his first coaching job, and you know he was just one of the guys, and you know I, I think he was a huge part in us uh, being able to you know turn things around my you know our senior year. Uh, I mentioned this earlier uh, to a few people. One of the coaches that really me means a lot to me, and I probably spent the least amount of time with, is Jerry Wainwright. Um, most football players think they're basketball players, and they're not. <laughs> uh, and, you know, I had the opportunity to, to join the basketball team my sophomore year. And, you know, just being around uh, Coach Wayne Wright and a smaller group of guys with the same vision of wanting to win, it was an absolutely amazing experience. Uh, we had struggled the first couple of years here uh, with football. I'd always wanted to play basketball, and it was one of those things where I started, you know, playing in the offseason with some of the guys on the team, and, you know, they were like, hey, why don't you uh, – you know, talk to coach about possibly walking on. I'm like, you serious, man? Um, now, I sat so far down the bench, I was almost behind the backboard. <laughs> but, you know, just, just being with those guys every day, competing, uh, you know, learning and growing and maturing uh, was, was absolutely an amazing experience. So even though I only have two career points, What? <laughs> if, if you only have two career points, uh, that half a season, uh, you know, was something that I'll never forget. Beating Kansas in Kansas, uh, I had the opportunity to go to the NCAA tournament, but I turned it down to attend the first day of spring ball. I kind of take that one back. <laughs> that would have been a cool experience, but nonetheless, it all worked out. Uh, I would like to ask my mom and my stepfather, Charles, to stand. So they live like 15 minutes from campus. And, uh, you know, there were countless times where Mom would call, hey, you hungry? Always hungry, Mom. Why don't you come over and bring your laundry? Um, so just having just having them there, um, you know, always as a sounding board. And being supportive. And uh, you know, always being there for me. Um, you know, I greatly appreciate it and uh, Oh, thank you. Thank you. I greatly appreciate it. And, uh, you know, I hope to be able to support and love my kids, uh, you know, the way you guys have. So thank you. Uh, I would like to acknowledge my sister, Tamika, uh, for always being there willing to talk. Uh, for telling me when I was being a knucklehead. And just, you know, always giving, you know, good sisterly advice. Uh, my best friend of, I don't know how many years. Uh, but, uh, oh, you guys. Okay. All right. All right. Love you guys. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you, buddy. All right. Um, uh, my best friend of a very long time, Shantae, uh, 
Yes, that's her. <laughs> which, which takes me to my next point. Which takes me to my next point. I have videotapes of JV, basketball, football, baseball, whatever, all the way to games from college, and that same scream would always be heard in the background. So, Even at the NFL. He, yes, <laughs> everywhere. So, yes, thank you for, for always being a great friend, and I love you. Uh, there's quite a few family that, you know, would always, you know, travel to games. Uh, you know, some from, uh, shoot, the western part of the state, some from out of the state sometimes. And, uh, you know, it was just great to, you know, win or loss, always come off the field and see family. Uh, I absolutely love that. You know, going out to dinners after the game, uh, whether it was a great win or a tough loss, you know, food always makes anybody feel better. So uh, it was great to, uh, great to have you guys there. Um, I'll finish this up. Um, so anybody that was a, around the program knew my dad would always come up for practice. Uh, you know, he was quiet, you know, but he would show up late, <laughs> which is where I get it from. Uh, but, you know, he was always there. And uh, when he was around, you know, my teammates, coaches, you know, everybody, you know, treated him like he was, you know, a part of the team, you know, which was cool. And, uh, you know, I always enjoyed him being here. Um, unfortunately, uh, 2014, you know, he passed. And I always knew I, you know, wanted to be in the Hall of Fame. And, you know, when I got the call, you know, I was excited. And, you know, glad to, to be able to finally, uh, you know, join, you know, such a prestigious group. Um, then I was a little sad. Because my dad wouldn't be here. And I know how proud he would be. And I know I would, you know, be able to give him a hug and, you know, he would say congratulations. You know, I love you, son. I'm proud of you. And since he's not here to do that, I want to take the opportunity to have my kids stand up. All right. And I want you guys to know even though granddaddy's not here to tell me how proud he is of me I want to tell you guys how proud I am of you and You're always going to make me and your mom proud. So if we forget to tell you, or if we're not there to tell you, just know we love you, and we're very proud of you. As a kid and as a teenager, and even as a college athlete, sometimes we carry egos. And sometimes we take coaching as a personal attack on us. But as I matured, as I've become a coach, worked with other kids, 
have kids of my own, it's the furthest thing from the truth. As a coach and as a parent, you really want what's best for your kids. So it's not a personal attack on kids or athletes. It's giving them information that you wish you would have had when you were their age. So to my kids, to the kids of our sports academy, Impact Sports Academy, I want you guys to know that coaches are just below parents in terms of people who, who care for you. So if a coach asks you to do something, it's not to hurt you. It's not because they want you to fail. Sometimes coaches want it more than parents do. Excuse me, more than, more than the kids or the athletes do. All right? So if you're lucky enough to have some of the, some of the coaches or coaches like some of the coaches that I've had, please listen to them. They only want what's best for you. You guys got it? All right, you can stop crying. <laughs> I love you guys. Thank you so much. And I'm glad to be, glad to be uh, in the Hall of Fame. Thank you very much. Hey, Stacy, we'll echo that. We love you and we're proud of you. Thank you. And I can confirm uh, what he said about basketball because he pulled me aside before we started tonight and said, hey, Bob, I'm, I'm a little upset at the bio that you've got on me. And I went, uh-oh. I, I looked at him. I, I got everything in there, all his records. You know, he played for the Jets. He went on to what? Because you didn't put in there that I scored two points for the basketball team. <laughs> we'll get it in there. I promise, we'll get it in there. Uh, speaking of records, they are eye-opening records that Heather Gardner Quinn amassed on the lacrosse field, but her contributions to the sport only began there and what she has done in the Richmond lacrosse community since her graduation. Uh, here at Richmond, she finished her playing career atop our record book in career points, goals, and assists, became just the second Richmond player to reach more than 100 points and 100 goals in her career. She was honored for that. She was an All-American. She was a first-team All-State and All-Region standout, a two-time All-Colonial Athletic Association first-team selection. She finished amongst the nation's top 20 in total points and goals as a junior, and she led her team back into the national rankings. The Spiders were ranked as high as 15th during her playing career. And then she went on to work here in the Richmond lacrosse community, volunteer here in the Richmond lacrosse community. She co-founded the Women of Richmond Lacrosse League, which is a collegiate and post-collegiate lacrosse league. Um, and I will say one more thing before we bring her up. Something happened tonight that I don't think has happened in all the years I've been doing this, and that's a long time, probably too long of a time. The current Richmond women's lacrosse team came here tonight to congratulate Heather. And I don't think we have ever had a full team come to congratulate an inductee into the Hall of Fame. So, uh, and they were a little bit shy about coming in because they were in their Richmond sweatsuits, but uh, they stood outside and each one of them congratulated her and the impact that she has had on Richmond lacrosse. She was, yeah. Give, Heather was inducted into the Richmond chapter of the U.S. Lacrosse Hall of Fame in 2020, and now she is inducted into the University of Richmond Athletic Hall of Fame, Heather Gardner Quinn. Heather?
Stacy, if I break down up here, you started it. <laughs> that was beautiful, by the way. So when Bob called me um, about this induction, I cried. And then when I read that I had to do a speech, I cried more. <laughs> <laughs> Starting to think I should have taken a public speaking class when I was here, but I didn't. So indulge me, I have it on paper and I'll be reading and I'm sorry, but I'm gonna do the best I can. Um, I can't begin to explain, I need these, how humbled and honored it feels to be standing up here tonight. Never in my wildest dreams, now I'm shaken because of Stacy, that's still your fault. Um, never in my wildest dreams could I have imagined a moment like this. To my fellow inductees, I'd like to extend my congratulations to you all. In reading through each of your accomplishments, it humbled me even further to realize I would be standing here alongside such an impressive group. It truly is an honor to be inducted into the Hall of Fame with all of you. Congratulations, fellow spiders. I'll be honest, talking about myself is uncomfortable. It's much easier to talk about the people who helped me get here. The accolades and accomplishments on the field are fun to hear back when they're listed off like that. But that's not what stands out in my mind when I think of my athletic career as a spider. Records and accolades are the product of countless moments, no matter how insignificant they were at the time, that are the backdrop to my story. These moments and the people I shared them with are what shape character, define friendships, make teams feel like family, and set the stage for an unforgettable journey. There are so many thanks to be said. I can honestly say that this is a collaboration of so many people, many of whom are sitting here in this room tonight. First and foremost, I thank God for every single blessing in my life. I have never chalked anything up to luck. The coaches I played for here at Richmond, Lisa Wells, who recruited me out of Unionville, Pennsylvania, Kim Hordashevsky, who took over after Lisa. Kim was a great motivator, a great leader. A huge thanks goes out to every single teammate I was lucky enough to share the field with here at Richmond. We were sisters in sweat, plain and simple. I'd give anything to go back in time and play with those girls again. And maybe if we can get them here for the adult league, we could do that. I got some here. To my friends and my family who made the trip to be here tonight, I'd like to first say thanks to my brother, Rob. <laughs> he's the reason I discovered lacrosse. I don't know if you know that. When Rob was in middle school, he's an artist, so this sounds funny to you. But <laughs> he did dapple in sports, and he played lacrosse for a little while in middle school. During one of his games, I remember playing on a side field with some other kids. We got our hands on someone's lacrosse sticks, and we started tossing around. And from that moment on, I was hooked. In the years that followed, my brother has always supported me in my athletic endeavors. One of my favorite memories was when he surprised me right here on this campus as I was presented with the Athlete of the Year Award my senior year. That meant the world to me. I had no idea you were going to be here. Rob and Angela, his wife right there next to him, thank you for your never-ending support and for being here tonight. <laughs> to my parents, there is no possible way to express how grateful I am for the lifetime of love and support they have given me. My dad has always shown nothing but pride for me, and without fail, his sense of humor would keep me laughing in every situation. He couldn't be here tonight, but I can't wait to share this with him the next time I see him. My mom, you want to stand up, mom? Stacy started it. You stand up. <laughs> My mom. She is and always has been my role model and my biggest fan. There's nothing she can't do. You see, she is an athlete and she's a beauty pageant winner. <laughs> Included in her collection is a stack of senior Olympic medals, as well as the 1965 Miss Virginia crown. <laughs> She has it all. My mom proves the motto, once an athlete, always an athlete. She taught me to never stop playing. She often says, it's like inertia. A body in motion stays in motion. And she's right. I'm realizing that now. My mom, thanks for teaching me so much. I love you. <laughs> 
I'm trying to follow your example by running around that lacrosse field still at age 48. I usually try to keep score and these girls know that that's true. <laughs> you have blazed the trail. I admire you. And I can't thank you enough for never missing a game. Alongside countless other lacrosse advocates here in the Richmond area, I love volunteering my time to help grow the game. I give back to this sport because lacrosse has given me so much in my life. It taught me how to dig deep, be uncomfortable, work hard, be a teammate, find success, bounce back from defeat, and be selfless. Lacrosse opened the door for me to attend this prestigious university where I earned a top-notch education and a Division I athletic career. Lacrosse brought me my best friends from middle school, high school, college teams, to now as an adult. Lacrosse continues to bring amazing people into my life. The lacrosse community is where I find my people. It's humbling to see so many of those people here tonight. Allison, Mandy, Carolyn, teammates who became friends, friends who became roommates, and even, in Mandy's case, roommates who became family. <laughs> she married my husband's brother. We're sisters-in-law now. <laughs> you guys made our four years at this school unforgettable. We did everything together. We sweat, we laughed, we lost, we won, we ran, and then we ran some more, and then we cried. <laughs> and then we thrived, and we did it together. Teammates make each other better. And you guys certainly did that for me. Thank you so much for being here with me tonight. I'd like to give a shout out to Bill and Stephanie Karn. Bill, when I moved here to Rich Richmond in 2010, see how I had left for a while, came back in 2010, you immediately pulled me into the world of volunteering. Since then, we have coached countless youth teams, run clinics, coach high school teams, and even started the Women of Richmond Lacrosse League. The number of kids who have discovered lacrosse through these efforts and the friends we've met through this league are immeasurable. Bill, thank you for showing me the ropes and being my lacrosse sidekick for the last 11 years. It has been and still is a blast. When I got the call from the University of Richmond about this Hall of Fame induction, I was told that Allison Kolek had submitted my nomination. Allison was head coach of the women's lacrosse cross team here for the past nine years. She led the Spiders to its highest ranking in program history and amassed more winning seasons than any coach before her. As bittersweet as it is, I'm proud to watch her as she embarks on a new job as head women's lacrosse coach at Clemson University. When I said that lacrosse continues to bring amazing people into my life, Allison is one of those people. She couldn't be here tonight. She canceled just this afternoon. She wasn't feeling well. But if she were here, I would say to her, Allison, you've become a wonderful friend to me. Maybe she is watching virtually. I am so touched that you put my name in the hat for this, this induction. You are already greatly missed here in the Richmond community. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for your support and friendship. Most importantly, I would like to thank my husband and my four kids. You want to stand up? <laughs> they don't. They don't want to stand up. We're all spread apart here. <laughs> Joe, who I started dating when I was just 17, has been by my side since high school. In fact, when I played here at Richmond, we even had a, pl a play named Joe. The play was designed to get the ball to me behind the cage for a crease roll and a shot on goal. Needless to say, I scored every time with Joe. <laughs> My husband is also a lacrosse player. He still plays as an adult and also volunteers as a coach whenever needed. With our shared passion for lacrosse and the endless opportunities to grow the game here in Richmond, I'm grateful to have my husband to do it with. His support and patience is unwavering. I love you to pieces, Joe. We make an awesome team. To my kids, the rest of our team, Tegan, Gavin, Penny, and Molly, you are the greatest gifts God gave me. As a mother, I have come to understand the selflessness and patience it takes to parent a child. Nothing brings me more joy than supporting our kids as they find their way in the world. And as a parent of four incredible athletes, 
I've discovered that watching them succeed on the field is even more rewarding than playing. Thank you, all four of you, for allowing Dad and I to coach your teams. Thank you for sharing your successes and failures with us. Keep up the grind and remember this, this quote as you move forward. The meaning of life is to find your gift. The purpose of life is to give it away. To the University of Richmond, the athletics department, and the women's lacrosse program, thank you for the opportunity to be a spider. Thank you for, the four, for four of the best years of my life and the friends it brought me. Thank you for this honor and for this beautiful evening to remember it by. I am absolutely filled with gratitude tonight. And I'll have to echo what John said. We are spiders for life. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, Heather. Um, one of the real joys that, that I have been allowed to do is make those phone calls to the Hall of Fame inductees. Uh, and it was a treat with this entire class, exuberance and excitement. I, I told Heather, I think she was over the top a little more than anyone, and she worried me because she said, you caught me while I was driving to pick up my kids, and I was very fearful she was about to drive off the road. So <laughs> glad that didn't happen. Had that happened, though, we have just the doctor who could have taken care of you. <laughs> Well, I didn't even script that, I just came up with that. Uh, Dr. Chris Young began here at the University of Richmond assisting another Hall of Fame team physician, Dr. E.L. Clements. Uh, for 25 years, Dr. Young served us here at the University of Richmond, always volunteering, never took any compensation for the countless hours of service to our athletic department. Um, when Dr. Clements retired, Dr. Young became our head team physician. He worked and traveled extensively with the football team, which included the 2008 National Championship. And I kind of emphasize the word travel because we so enjoyed traveling uh, with football with Dr. Young. And one of our favorite stops, believe it or not, was always when we went to play the University of Maine. Believe it or not, the University of Maine. So what's Maine known for? Seafood and lobster. And there was a restaurant just down the road from our team hotel that served the best of all of that. And Dr. Young, every year that we went there, would use that as an opportunity to take those of us, broadcasters, PR, athletic trainers, equipment managers, out to a dinner at that seafood restaurant in Maine. And he took care of us by doing that. And it was just such great camaraderie that I don't even know how to thank you for that because there were so many special moments on that one road trip that we did so many times up to the cold air, up to the cold New England state of Maine. And I remember it just so well. So I do appreciate the camaraderie that you gave us on those trips. But mostly and more importantly, Dr. Young performed hundreds of operations, treated thousands of spider student athletes, of coaches, of staff members as well. He did retire just last year from his role as team physician, but I can tell you, and our uh, head athletic trainer, Chris Jones, is here tonight. I know he can echo it as well. Dr. Young always used the philosophy, treat every student athlete like they were your own son or daughter. With that as a backdrop, I introduce our last Hall of Famer, Dr. Chris Young. Dr. Young. So, 49 years ago, when people used to ask me uh, why I wanted to be a doctor, I always used to say, I want to be a doctor because I love science and I love people. But for the last 25 years, when anybody asks me the same question, I've always said, I love science, I love people, and I love spiders. So this is an honor beyond my comprehension just to be mentioned 
with these other inductees is humbling and really beyond belief. It's been a privilege to be part of the spider community for the last 25 years and have been entrusted with the health and well-being of so many student athletes and individuals. I do think the award is a recognition of an extended family of people and other medical professionals and on their behalf, I also have a bunch of thank yous. So first, Martha, my bride of 37 years, please stand up. And my family, my kids aren't here because they're with all their grandkids, um, our grandkids. Thank you for your support, especially for all the times I was away. Thanks for coming to so many spider games and tailgates and embracing the spider community. Next, I'd like to thank all the many outstanding trainers that I've worked with over the years. Being an athletic trainer is a really difficult and a thankless job. So to all of you, I say thank you. But I'd especially like to rec recognize our head trainer, Chris Jones, here tonight. It's been an unbelievable privilege to be able to work with him for the last 19 years. His professional, academic, and organizational skills are amazing, but are topped by his dedication to the student athletes on his watch. Nothing but the best is acceptable. Thank you, Chris. Where is he? Thank you, Chris. I'd also like to thank the whole cadre of doctors and health professionals I've worked with, a large team of consulting providers who represent most all the specialties in Richmond and who've agreed to serve as consultants for the university. They're the best doctors, chiropractors, therapists in Richmond, and they dedicate their time and expertise, usually seeing our players on an urgent basis and providing elite care. I'd particularly like to thank my personal medical team with Worthow, Virginia, Jake Piglisi, Kerry Kolbeck, Joanna Monahan, and Luann Wellman, who I am blessed to be able to have worked with. I'd also like to thank four of the doctors, Thorpe Davis, who couldn't be here tonight, who worked with me for 15 years. Doug Cutter is the finest primary care sports medicine doctor I've ever known. Bob White, he's our team neurologist, and he rose to the occasion when head injury management became critical in contact sports. And Paul Karitsis, who is here tonight, um, he's your current head team physician, and he's a Richmond alum. Where are you, Paul? There you are. <laughs> They're incredible doctors and friends. I've worked with fantastic coaches who've accepted the complex coaches' dilemma of doing what's best for the health of the players on their team who get injured, but they also need to beat VCU on Saturday. <laughs> and I'm pleased to say that over 20 years, no coach ever put winning ahead of the health of his or her players. Also, a quick shout out to all the coaches like Coach Mooney and Coach Beeline, who let us come in the half for, at halftime for all of the halftime speeches. It's really a thrill. And I'd like to thank the Athletic Administration for all of their support. Particularly, though, I'd like to thank Bob Black, who's been with me the whole time that I was at Richmond. We've been on countless football trips together, like he said. He's wearing a mask tonight. But if he wasn't wearing his mask, he has this smile on his face that makes you think like he knows something that you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> In addition to considering him a good friend, Martha, my wife Martha and I think he's the best sports broadcaster in the world. <laughs> and a lot better than those reporters from ESPN. To all the Spider fans, just for the record, there's overwhelming medical evidence that sports fans are healthier and happier than non-sports fans. <laughs> so you have another good reason to help keep on supporting the University of Richmond. I can't tell you all the wonderful people I've met over the years, but I would particularly like to thank Jeff Thomas, class of 78, and his wife Nancy, 
and former Spider basketball player Langdon Moss, class of 73, and his wife Gay for their friendship and their willingness to allow me to bring the medical staff from the visiting team to their tailgate most every home football game for 20 years. So thank you all very much. <laughs> Lastly, though, I'd like to thank the players and the families who entrusted their care to our team. We had four rules in spider sports medicine. The first and most important rule, treat every student athlete as if they were your own son or daughter. Enough said there. Rule number two, which is be on time, was the first thing told to me by my predecessor and mentor, Dr. E.L. Clemens, who set the standard for medical care at Richmond for 25 years. Rule three, be able to defend every decision you make to anyone. We added this rule over the course of my career because sooner or later, you're gonna be asked about your decisions and it's fair for us to be expected to be able to explain them to appropriate parties. And rule number four, sometimes we break our rules. <laughs> Not so much our three rules, but the rules of orthopedics. And so because these are two of my favorite memories, two Richmond student athletes have given their permission for me to tell their stories tonight. So. Kate Flavin is one of the best basketball players to ever put on a Spider jersey. Under her leadership, the women's basketball team rose from years of struggling to get their one and only at-large bid to the NCAA tournament during her senior year. Then, she tragically tore her intercrucial ligament about four weeks before the tournament. Anyone who reads the sports page knows that tearing your ACL is a season-ending injury. After a lot of soul searching, education, and against mainstream medicine, Kate Flavin played in the NCAA tournament game with her torn ACL, giving her a once in a lifetime memory. In fact, tonight, I'm wearing the NCAA watch that she gave. <clears throat> um, Chris Condorosi was a spider football player who tore both his right and his left anterior crucial ligament. His second ACL tear occurred in September of 2008, right at the start of football season. And then he underwent surgery. And as you all know, that's typically a year-long recovery. Breaking the rules in four months, four months after his ACL reconstruction, Chris Condorosi was our starting center in the national championship victory in Chattanooga, another once-in-a-lifetime experience. I'm also wearing that championship ring. So I'm not gonna lie, being head team physician of a major university sports program is a hard job. Each year has its own new challenges. Sometimes things turn out the way you hope, don't turn out the way you hope. Sometimes there are a lot more injuries than normal. Sometimes the injuries are more complex and hard to treat. It's hard watching young people get hurt. Football season is the hardest by far because there are so many injuries and so many road trips that take up the whole weekend. My wife, Martha, recently reminded me that each December, at the end of every fall sports season, I would always say, I think this is gonna be my last year. <laughs> but then winter, winter would come around, and we would start looking at all the new football recruits, and we'd see a superstar like Stacy Tutt on the list. Or Coach Beeline's basketball team would beat UVA in double overtime and then we get excited all over again. Thank you, Spider Nation, it's been a great run. The uh, next time the football team is at Maine, you're coming with us and we're buying you dinner. Uh, as I said at the outset, this is always the most heartwarming night of the year, and tonight has certainly lived up to those expectations. Uh, how about we salute and honor the newest inductees into the University of Richmond Athletics Hall of Fame one more time.
Uh, we thank you all for being here tonight. Um, to Dr. Ta Halleck and your wife, Tina, thank you for being here for the first time. We hope it's the first of many. Thank you for being a part of our program tonight. Again, inductees, don't forget about tomorrow and the introduction at halftime at the football game at Robin Stadium. We welcome you back. We hope you enjoy your evening and your day at football tomorrow. Again, congratulations. Thanks to everyone for being here tonight, and go Spiders.